Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new build to share with you guys today. This is the brand new 35th scale border model Panzer IV F1. And this is a, a unique kit. I did a review of it just recently, a couple weeks ago. I was very impressed with the kit, and so I wanted to build it up, and possibly two in the near future, because there are three different versions you can build up on it. You can build the Vor Panzer, as you see on here, and the Vor Panzer has all the extra armor on the front. You can do a standard F1, which we could do in North Africa, or even just a Russian winter. And then they have a very limited, um, I shouldn't say limited, they had a, a vehicle that was probably a one-off, in, that they have a picture of, but it's an F1 with skirts all around it, both the turret and the uh, the uh, hull. So three cool vi different versions. I'm putting up a, vi a, a poll on YouTube right now of which way you guys want me to build this. So by the time I get to the painting, we should have the poll on that, but I'm debating back and forth between North Africa and Russian winter whitewash, camouflage. So two, two great choices on that. So like I showed you guys before, it looks like a really nice kit and shouldn't be too many parts to put together, so we should have a lot of fun doing it. So, let's get started. Hey, and just one quick thing before we get started on the build, I just want to let you guys know, some of you know, most of you know, but a few of you don't yet. This is all a real hobby store. I do have a hobby store in Glendale, Arizona, that if you're in the area, I'd love for you guys to stop by, take a look. Also, we have an online hobby store, Andy's H. A-N-D-Y-S-H-H-Q.com and go on there. These kits are available. All the supplies that I use for weathering and painting this are available on there, plus thousands of other products, and the site is growing constantly right now. Plus, also, worldwide shipping will be coming fairly soon, just working on computer programs that run all of that stuff. So, uh, yes, if you get a chance, please go hop on andyshq.com and take a look. So, now let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off working on the, uh, the lower hull as usual. As you can see, it's a bathtub style hull. Uh, quite a bit of detail on here already molded into place. We've got some of the upper hull in here, the louvers that make up the, uh, the exhaust system on it. And a lot of these pieces are already molded into place. So we're uh, got a little bit ahead of the game already with that. Now what I'm doing right now is I like to, because there's so many wheels and little parts on this, we're going to basically assembly line a lot of this stuff. So I've cut off the tops of the, or the fronts of the wheels, and we're just going to leave these in place right here. And this is going to make sanding go a lot quicker. So we're just going to go down the line a couple at a time here, add the modeling cement as we go and then glue up the wheels. And the reason I do this is because there's a lot of connection points on these wheels. And by doing this, we are cutting the time in half for doing the sanding of all the road wheels. So helps a little bit more. I like to take a bag like this. We've done one whole sprue already, as you can see, cut and sanded all the wheels. I put this all together and it's, you know, this is the, the monotonous work <laughs> starting off. So this kind of stuff, turn the radio on and just go to town getting all these things done. Things like cutting out the uh, suspension arms, things like that. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that. And the suspension arms are also already molded or primarily molded with most of the parts already on them into place. So we're going to get these all done up. I'm going to do all of the drive sprockets, the, uh, the return rollers here, the little return rollers up on top. Get everything done like that. And then we'll start putting everything onto the hull. Okay, we have one full side built up. And you guys might know, I always do that just so I check for any fit issues or anything like that or any things that'll pop up and I'll show you how the other side goes together. One thing I'm going to show you is this right here. There are a bunch of these little hooks that we're going to need to put on here. In this case, I'm going to recommend you leave the little, uh, the little bit of sprue left on there. And that is that works as a great handle for putting those into place. And then once they get dry, then you can go back with your fine nippers and a little sandpaper, nip that right off. But you have a much bigger area to grab onto to hold the part so you can put it into place. So now that we have that done up, what I'm going to do is basically just show you quickly how the uh, the rest of the the parts go together. 
So we have our individual bogeys here, and what we need to do is build them up. Now there's a left and a right, so you got to keep those in mind when you go to put it together. I think the way these are designed, that they're designed that they can be made to work. We're not worried about that in this particular case. Actually, I don't think it could actually work because we have the Lincoln Link track. So, but it doesn't. Uh, these are kind of tight, but you can push that right into there, and then you overlap with this end cover that'll get put on right, just like that, which I have already done in this position. So then, with that, we can go ahead and attach the wheels. So just showing this kind of quickly because this is all pretty pretty easy to put together and then on the side here we've got the parts as followed we have all of our return rollers up on top and those are always fun to put on too because when you put a little bit of glue inside there if uh, you don't let the glue set up a little bit or you put too much on it creates a pocket of glue and when you push that on the pressure in there can't release the liquid so it has a tendency to blow it back so Make sure that you push those all the way in. Okay, and once we put the return rollers in, you can see right down here, there are some little extra pads that we need to put in here. Actually, not pads, I should say. There, there are more stops. They're the bottom of the, uh, the stop that we need to install in here. And there we go. Just like that, and that's how we've, we've done it on this one. Then we need to apply a little bit of cement there is only one way to put these on luckily and you can see it just goes on just like that and we get all of the drive sprockets in the, or excuse me return rollers into place go ahead also and attach the drives for the, uh, the housing here for the gears just like that and then once we get all that together I have built up the rear end of this and that was just uh, some easy, simple to put together. And that will get actually glued right into place right here, just like that. And you will have basically the whole lower portion of the suspension done on this vehicle. So it's very quick and easy. Oh, one other thing I should point out too, it calls out in very first steps to go ahead and put the, the louvers over the back here. Uh, I'm actually gonna hold off on that for a little bit because we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, the fenders in and with the fenders in there's gonna be a place that's gonna support those louvers a little bit better so I would definitely hold off on those to a little bit further on into the build and here we are with the suspension fully in place and we're just gonna put on the rear plate here a little cement also I, I've attached the uh, the drive sprockets by just pushing them into place and temporarily holding them there. We're going to take them off uh, for painting and things like that, but it's we want to be able to move those a little bit to get the Lincoln Link tracks on later, so don't go ahead and glue those into place yet. Okay, we're just test fitting the fenders. You can see they've got a, a pretty big size uh, pattern that you match up on the inside here, and they will basically click up into position right here. Now we have to make the decision which vehicle we're going to make because these little pegs are molded on the outside of the fender and that makes up the, uh, the Scherzen on the side. And one little problem that I'm noticing right here, which we'll be able to fix, but to keep you aware of it, the upper hull, which fits really well, snapping into place here, has the little indents already on it for the Scherzen. There, 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 and then four on the other side too. So if we're not going to do the Scherzen one, which I actually hadn't planned on doing, uh, I think we're gonna have to go ahead and fill those. And you can see they're, they're pretty big uh, divots right there. What I'm gonna try to do is to see if taking the other side of the Scherzen, the actual grate, and take the little piece that fits in there, see if we can glue that in there and then cut off the Scherzen and file it smooth. And that, in theory, should match up to the, the exact size. So I, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing this one in a, a winter, a Russian winter, so gray with a whitewash all over it. So we're not gonna put the skirts on it at all. Um, so I'm going to get these, these glued into place. We will cut these outer edges off right here. And then I will glue the upper hole on and then see about getting rid of those little divots inside of it there. Okay, we're putting on 
the glasses play and the front part of the uh, upper hull here. And we want to make sure this pops completely into place, just like that. And as you can see, we're starting to put all the other things on, like the uh, machine gun and, of course, the access hatches right here, which are all separate pieces, as well as the, uh, the hinge, too. The hinge needs to be put on separately as well. But we'll get that rest of that put on. Uh, as you can see, I did have to putty slightly. I did try the thing where we put the, the pieces in, and it took the majority of the of the hole up, but I still wanted to make sure, so we just put a little putty on. We'll go over and sand over the rest of them. Most of the other ones came out okay, just those uh, three right there, or actually four. Just want to make sure they're perfect when we finally get them done. So with this being done now, we're going to leave all the tools, all the accessories off for right now because we want to paint those separately. And we're going to go ahead and start putting the rest of the hatches on and some of the other little accessories that are not tools. Okay, we're working on the tracks a little bit here. And I'm right now gluing together the link and link tracks, which... Once we get them all in a row, I like to put a little extra cement down the side here and let those set up for about, about five or ten minutes, just so they're not tacky anymore. And uh, we've gone ahead and put all of the hatches on, the little areas around here. And you'll also notice I've put one whole set of tracks on here. And that is because this is going to be very difficult to try to build the tracks off the vehicle and then get them in there properly so they look like the way they're supposed to. So I don't think I'm going to have much problem painting the tracks around the vehicle, especially because it is all German gray and it's going to be weathered and dirty and things like that. So it shouldn't be much of a problem. And I think the tracks are going to turn out nicer looking. It would have been possible to split them right here, but getting them over through this area in here, I, I started doing that and I was just having a lot of problems and I was breaking them. And I just thought, you know what, for this type of vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and just glue them in place. So once you do that, it's just a matter of gluing up the little bit of sections. It actually makes it much, much easier when you're not trying to make them to go off. So I've got this big long strip right here done up, which will be the sag. That's why this is kind of rippled right here. And then this part right here will wrap around the drive sprocket. So I'll basically just show you how this is, but it's going to be really... It's a little time consuming because you got to cut them all out and clean them and stuff like that, but very easy to put on once you, uh, you get, get the hang of it there. So just a matter of still leaving this off because you still want to have a little bit of play in this to make sure that they still wrap just the way they are. Okay, the track is set up a little bit, hopefully enough, and we can get it on here because we're going to actually start gluing this into place once we like the way it is. So line up those little pieces you know the little bumps and then we can take this and hopefully we did it right and yeah it'll wrap right around just like that and then we can just start building up the rest of the track all the way around uh i'm gonna actually probably just glue this into place now that i like the way it is and then just start working on the rest of it so this should probably take another 15 minutes to do the rest of the track wrap it all the way around glue it into place and then we can start working on the turret I began work on the turret now and been putting all the little accessories on, pieces like that. Uh, came time to put the doors on and had a bear of a time getting these on, both sides in fact, and that's why they're already in place. I was going to show part of the construction on it. What it turns out though is the opening inside here is too small to get the doors to go in properly. So you could probably get them to go on you know, in the open position, but uh, I had to go in there and trim down a little bit of the the opening on both sides just to get it to fit in there right. And hopefully we did a, a good enough job on that. I'm still doing a little repair work here and there to get it all done up, but I think it'll look all right once we're done with it. But just be aware when you go to build yours that the doors, don't just try to shove them in there. We have the turret basket that we've built up that will get glued into place just like this. And now we also have the gun. Now they give you an aluminum barrel, as you can see here, and parts fit together pretty well. I was dry fitting this a minute ago and see how this all goes together here. Nice tight fit. Stack it up, almost doesn't need glue. And then finally, this little protect the, uh, I believe this thing is the, the thing that knocks down the antenna if the, the barrel is spinning. Um, 
If I'm wrong about that one, I know some of them have that kind of thing. I think that's what is on this one as well. If it isn't, tell me down below in the uh, the comment section down there. So we'll get the rest of this barrel built up and then start working on the rest of the turret and see if there's any other things, and we'll show you how it all goes together. Here is the uh, mostly completed model, and mostly I mean we haven't put the tools on, and a couple of little tiny accessory pieces like jack block, things like that, that uh, we'll put on after we do all of our paint job. It'll be a little bit easier to do that in place. And as you can see, we do have the tracks in place already, so we'll have to go and paint around those. The, uh, the kit itself, everything went together great. We did have just a little bit of trouble with the doors on the turret. And now when knowing about that, when I do my second one, I'll know how to plan ahead for that and be able to just, just shave a little bit off the inside in there to get, your, get mine to fit. You might want to check yours before you do it, but uh, I think it's probably a, a universal thing. And also, too, the next one we do North Africa, we'll probably have the, one of the doors open, so that won't be a problem at all. And now we're going to paint the vehicle with Tamiya's German Gray. We're going to paint the entire thing. After we get it painted, we will completely clear coat the entire model with actually two coats of dull coat to really seal that paint job in because we're going to let that dry for a full day and then we'll come back and start doing the whitewash application. One other thing we need to do too also is we need to put the decals on first and there's only a total of six decals so nothing uh, extreme that we have to worry about but we're going to put all six of those on use a little mark fit to make sure they're perfectly on there and then we will seal them with the, uh, the lacquer dull coat. And here is the model all painted up in the German gray with the decals applied. We also, like I said, have two coats of dough coat on there that have fully dried for at least a day now. And now we're going to start the whitewash process. And we're going to use the old-fashioned hairspray technique. We haven't used that in quite a long time and it actually works out pretty good, I think, for whitewashing. So, I just got a, a can of... Uh, <laughs> just regular hairspray and this one that we picked up and also you might also notice too there's a figure in there a friend of mine Dusty uh, painted this up for me but we're gonna pull him out right now we don't want him getting damaged and we're gonna put two light coats over the entire model and we're gonna make sure we get the model completely done with hairspray so we don't miss any areas now I'm gonna do that outside because the hairspray kind of stinks I think and uh, I don't want it all the smell of that so I will put those two coats on let it fully dry and then we'll come back and we'll show you the next step Hairspray is now dry. We let it dry for probably about a half an hour. Uh, and now we are going to take our XF2 flat white and we're going to go over, I'd say about 80-85% of the entire vehicle. We don't want to paint the entire thing completely just pure white as if it came out of a factory. We want to look like something that has been applied in the field. Remembering too, a lot of the pictures I've seen, it looks like when they do apply stuff in the field, everything gets applied with it. The tracks, the, uh, the wheels, everything, but remember we're going to make a vehicle that has looked like it's been applied but it's probably been on there for a few weeks and it's starting to come off there's, you know, may have been snow or rain or something that is starting to remove quite a bit of the, uh, the whitewash paint so let's go ahead and put some whitewash on it Now we are going to show you how to chip this up. So we're taking a fairly firm brush dipped in just plain water and just slightly, or lightly I should say, lightly start to go over all of the, uh, the corner surfaces first. And we're going to do this in one to one. We're not going to speed the film up because we want to show you guys exactly what to expect on this. You can also start putting some on the top. And as the water soaks through the Tamiya paint, it is going to hit the hairspray. And when it finally hits the hairspray, it'll start to separate. And the rough action of the brush, there it goes, will start to remove paint in certain areas. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time. 
but you start to get scratches build up and you got to be careful too because it's going to be like this and then all of a sudden it's going to start to go a lot quicker and you don't want to be scrubbing too hard to remove too much paint but remember you can always go back over with another coat of white if you need to you want the, the random scratches dip your brush again in water because it's going to start to clog up with some of the white paint that was already on there and there it goes now you can see how the top is starting to come off more and more just like that so as you can see it's a little bit of a process but it is not difficult by any stretch of the word so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over the whole vehicle and um, I've tried to keep as much of the white off the tracks I mean we can clean up the tracks and we're gonna dirty them up a little bit but try your hardest to keep it off because the white would have not lasted on the tracks at all but we did put a little bit of the white up inside here and a little bit of the white on the wheels that we will just go over briefly and just leave the, the last little remnants of white on the road wheels just like that and we'll kind of work on all of those this works really well all those bolts will really start to pop out when you start to do those too and but that's as simple as it's going to be so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up and we're gonna come back and then we'll start doing our regular weathering just like we did any other vehicle with the grime and the uh, dirt and stuff like that Okay, now most of the uh, scratching has been done, but now we're still gonna take a little bit of our German Gray and using our foam brush, still gonna hit some of the areas that were kinda hard to scrape off that we don't wanna take too much paint off. And we started doing that randomly. And let that slowly build up. Very, very light though. Kind of evens out some of the, uh, the whitewash areas. As you can see, we've started putting the tools into place. Now we're going to use just a very small amount of streaking grime. And we're going to kind of put a little dirt areas around here. Kind of highlight some of the shadows. And like I said, we're using a little bit of streaking grime with just a little bit of thinner on it too, so it flows real well. We're going to put a couple little spots here and there. Then using our big brush, we're going to drag it down and take off any of the excess. So that it's dirty, but we don't want it really dirty. Got a little too much on that, so we'll thin that down a little bit. And we're just going to go over the whole vehicle with the uh, streaking grime. Maybe a touch of rust effect. Now, I rusted up the uh, muffler in the back, and we started to put some extra track links on the front here into different positions. And we'll put a little rust and stuff around there because there's supposed to be some old T-34 tracks that have been around for quite a while and are rusting all over their vehicle. So we'll go ahead and put a few of the rush marks into that area and haven't glued any of those down yet. I'm going to probably put a little bit more newer rust on those give you a general idea of what we're talking about.
for up in the wheel well area here. We're gonna put a little streaking grime. Thin down with some thinner. And then we're gonna use a little light sienna and a little burnt umber. Mixing the two back and forth up in here. Kind of, kind of thick. We want it to kind of, kind of caked on. We don't want it to look wet or muddy, but we want to look like there's some old dried up mud that might still be up inside here. And hopefully still have a little bit of the white showing through. But just blotting it on up inside there. And we're also going to do the same thing for the tracks themselves too, going all around the inside of in that area. And I've actually done that on this side. And it's still drying up right now, but the, the tracks are drying. They've got a nice, nice weathered effect to it there. So we'll go ahead and finish up the other side and then just do a little bit of touch up work and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. And here is our completed model. Now, as the, uh, the front of the tank rolls around here, you'll notice that I went ahead and put that T34 track on and then painted it with a little bit of white overspray. Uh, notice quite a few of the online pictures of the uh, Panzer IVs or any any tank like that in winter when they would throw extra track on they would try to paint those over too and then finally I just threw a little black wash over the top of it to kind of highlight the individual lengths of track and as you come around again here you'll notice all the lower part of it how it dried up right there we still have a little bit of the white showing through uh, but I think we have a nice dirty uh, winter Panzer IV right here. Very happy with the way the uh, the look came with it. Now, of course, this is an artistic representation of it. How much you want to put on it is completely up to you if you want to take off more. I've seen Panzer IVs that are completely painted white, painted very, very nicely painted white. And then I actually also found another picture just, uh, just yesterday uh, online, and it was a guy with a mop, and he was just flinging the paint on the Panzer IV in wartime. So it looked looked incredibly uh, messy and if he would have probably done that in a model people would go wow that doesn't look realistic at all but there's a picture to really prove it so but very happy with the way this kit came out uh, I love the the Panzer IV and with the winter on it looks really good too excited now to go do the the North African one that's going to be a, a few weeks down the road right now if I've got lots of other projects to uh to build and show you guys but very happy with this uh, the whitewash is very easy to do with the hairspray and is definitely something i would suggest you guys experiment and try and just see how it comes out i think it's it's a fun fun experiment to do it so i want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming